here we are. You're getting better and better each day with a demo development. You now know the concept of a template and choices, and you know how to use the script to test your model. And it comes out exactly the way you want it in the output. You are familiar with the concept of the ledger in the sandbox, and you're using the navigator and you're moving around like an expert. Oof. Ready for Jedi training you are. Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. If you're watching this video, chances are you are already familiar with some basic demo development and concepts. For example, you understand how contracts are created out of templates and how these templates have these built in by you choices that can be invoked or exercised. And sometimes exercising these by design will archive an active contract. You, you likely use the script to test this and see the output on the right side of the screen. And you may have used the navigator to log in as a party to make uh, to exercise choices or to create contracts. Now past this point, you're going to start to run into limitations if you want to customize your app for the look and feel and maybe some functionality. This is where you start to wonder, how do I bring in my own front end? And the answer lies in the JSON API. Let's start your Jedi training. Now, let's first start with examining an application architecture. We have the following diagram in our documentation with a React uh, full stack um, example. The white, part, the white part refers to what you write, and the pink part refers to things that are compiled or generated for you. So this part, the DAR file, is compiled from your demo file, for example. Now, at the end of the day, you'll be talking to, or rather your app will be talking to the Ledger API, submitting commands, reading from the Ledger, some utility services, and testing services. But behind the scenes, there are really four flavors of J JSON API. There's a Java one, there's a Scala one, there is a, a gRPC uh, one as well, but we'll focus on the JSON API for this video and postpone the rest of the discussion of, on the other ones in future videos. So let's dive into just the JSON API for now. The JSON API works just like most API that's JSON based. You use it to con create contracts, to exercise choices on contracts, and query current active contract set and retrieve known parties. Now, what it cannot do is inspect transactions, make asynchronous submit and completion workflows, and temporal queries like um, you want the, the transactions from this time to that time. So keep that limitation in mind. And if you run into limitation, you got to use the gRPC ver version of the Ledger API. Now, let's look at a basic REST flow. You got a front end, you got a demo, and you've got um, the API in the middle. So what, what will happen essentially at a high level is that you'll be issuing a create command from your front end that will go through the JSON API. If everything goes well, the back end, if you will, will send back a 200 just to tell you that everything went smoothly. Now, let's double click, if you will, and go deeper into that. In the instance of the sandbox, your front end will make a communication to the JSON API, but it cannot make a, um, you cannot make it alone. It needs a, a access token that can tie the authorization to a party. And you can do that by getting it from the JWT IO or from, from some JWT library. And how do you do that in the JWT IO? You have to supply the ledger ID, an application ID, and an act S, which is the party. So once that is done, the key is generated, the access key is generated, and then you package it with your JSON with your REST call, and that goes to the JSON API. And we're going to take a look at exactly that in the next few minutes. Fantastic. We're going to give Windows some love uh, in this video. So I'm going to create a simple demo project using the template of um, the skeleton. So a skeleton template that will give me a very simple scenario and with test script. So let's fire up 
demo studio and let's look at the demo file perfect we have exactly what we need we're not going to touch anything here but we're going to go into the yaml file uh, and make some changes so let's let me explain something first if i were to run demo start without touching anything it will do two things it will run the sandbox which will hold a in-memory ledger fantastic and it will run the navigator the web-based uh, ui that you can use to um, test your demo file and if you look at the output back in the terminal you are going to see that a ledger id has been um, assigned to you so what we're going to do is to uh, create our own or rather should i say we're going to set our own ledger id and we're going to call it test demo app ledger and the second thing we're going to do is we're going to suppress the starting of the navigator because we want to build our own UI eventually. So we're going to say uh, we're going to set that to false. Now, if I were to do a demo start again, you are going to see that it will start just the sandbox, but it will not start the navigator as we intended. Now, if you scroll up, you will find a uh, ledger ID that the ledger ID that we set. Now, the, when you see press C, that means that everything is ready to go. Okay, fantastic. So we'll leave that open and running. And for this video, we're going to do Flutter. Uh, so for Flutter, I like to run Flutter Doctor, uh, for those of you who are familiar, just to make sure that everything is okay. And you may or may not have to run this command to make sure that the Flutter can build Windows apps. And we're going to do a Windows app uh, for this video. And um, if now I'm going to create a... Uh, a templated Flutter app and uh, there it is. I'm going to run it and you will see that it will fire up in a second in the Windows app and all it does is you have one button to click and it counts how many uh, buttons, uh, how many times you have pressed the button, that's all. So here we go, uh, Windows app should load up very quickly and there's a button at the bottom uh, right that you can click. It's building the app right now and once it's up, you can click on the plus sign. It counts the number of clicks. That's it. All right, fine. Now, let me show you a little neat trick. Uh, type code space dot, and that will fire up Visual Studio from that folder. Here it is. And uh, we're going to do a few simple things here. Uh, we're going to take a look at this file real quick. We're not going to dive in because this is not a Flutter tutorial. So what I'm going to do is to zip through uh, many of the steps that you are going to see uh, that's not relevant and essentially I'm using a boilerplate uh, uh, template and I'm going to give two buttons and I'm going to give Alice the ability to create a TV contract and then give it to Bob so two actions um, if you want to see the full version comment below and I will create another episode for it in normal speed I guess all right so fasten your seatbelt uh, here we go so what I'm essentially doing is to uh, debug the app while I'm coding uh, and uh, Flutter has this nice hot reload functionality. So what I'm going to do is to open up the Dart file and uh, change a few things. You see that on the app it has, uh, you have uh, clicked this so many times. I'm going to change that and I want a text box. There you go. And ideally we, we want a drop down box or a login box for proper authentication, but we don't have time to do that. So I'm just going to have a text box where I can enter Alice and put two buttons and the buttons are there now one is a star and one is a sign up button that I'm going to use for um, the giving uh, choice so right now on the back of the Visual Studio Code side you see that I am wiring up the relevant piece that will slow down a little bit for now the first thing you want to do is to uh, package together a nice JSON payload that we will um, send to the JSON API. It must have a template ID, and that uh, the value of that is the, the name uh, of the demo file and the template that we are addressing. And it needs three parameters. Uh, what is stated right now in the payload, the, um, the issuer, the owner, and the, the name of the, the item, which will be TV. We're gonna pass it as TV in the lines above that. And once we have this uh, JSON, uh, this map object, what we are going to do is to um, parse it. Well, we're not parsing it. We are uh, converting it into a proper, uh, encode it into a JSON data. 
and we are going to make our post call. Now, your framework may have a different way of doing it, but this is the way I would do it. Uh, we would do it in um, Flutter. And there's always a, a call that you will make and then uh, parameters that you pass to that particular call. In this case, we are passing in the, um, the headers and the body that we prepared in a few lines above. And then we want to wire up a response uh, or rather, we want to check for the response as it comes back. This is an asynchronous call. So when it does come back, it will look at the response. If it's 200, it's good. If it's 4 or 500, something is wrong. Now, we are, we're going to need a Alice uh, access token. Uh, in a proper way, we would have her log in and then get the access token. But we're going to use JWT.io. Go into the debug section and remove the payload uh, that they preset in there and enter the following uh, payload uh, in the structure. The ledger ID will be what we set our ledger ID to be. Uh, in this case, it was test demo app ledger. We're going to copy that and we're going to go back to GWTIO and paste that in. The second thing we need is the application, application ID. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use here, especially when you're just playing the sandbox. And for the act S, uh, it could be Bob, it could be Alice, but it needs to be generated for each person. In this case, we are just testing uh, the things that Alice can do. So we'll just keep it at Alice. Uh, turns out that uh, it does matter because it didn't like that single quote. So I'm going to go back and uh, say maybe it does. I'm going to copy that entire encoded uh, JWT and uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, Dart file, which is my Flutter with things are control and replace the uh, this access token that we are presetting into this demo app. So we're cheating here, right? We are just making things go a little faster just for demonstration purpose. Fantastic. Now we've got this app. Let me just arrange the windows. And I want to log in as Alice. And if I click the star, I should be able to create a TV uh, as I have hard coded it. And we want to put things side by side so we can see the output and what happens when I click Alice. So I have the demo file on my left. I click Alice, I click create, and look at the reaction you get from the demo site. Something is happening, it went through, and the the uh, out, the terminal shows um, that confirms that it has been pinged and there is a corresponding output. Now, if you go back to your front end, you should be able to, provide that you have coded it, you should be able to see an output as well. So let's go to our uh, Flutter app and look at the output that we have um, coded because we know it's a, it's a 200, so we know it was successful. So some response has been sent back to the front end. And here in blue, you see the JSON response that came back. So let's uh, make this a little taller. And you see that it's a response 200. And this was what was given back to us from JSON API, confirming that it was a 200. Fantastic. Now, um, look at this. This is the contract ID. Remember that when you create a, uh, a contract out of a template, a new contract ID is generated. And that is that contract ID. And we're going to need it. We're going to need it because we will need to act uh, we need to exercise choices on that new active contract. And remember that we have one more. Um, we have the give uh, uh, functionality that we need to code in. So in this next few screens, what I'm going to do is to create an equivalent uh, uh, event handler where I have to give the asset and I'm hardwiring it to Bob in this case. I'm still using Alice's token. Uh, the call itself will be slightly different. There's no payload. Uh, there's an argument, um, so I'm going to set it to a new owner because that is the only required input. So, um, but we do need that contract ID, don't we? We need an asset contract ID, which is which represents and references the TV that now Alice owns, and Alice is going to act on that. So, uh, I'm going to keep this blank for now. Again, this is a lazy way of coding in things so that we can do this demo. So 
Uh, in the following screens, what I've done is I've created a little helper function to uh, take a look at the blue output at the bottom and parse it and grab the contract ID out of it. So you don't have to worry about this. This is Flutter specific. So pretty much this function uh, will extract that contract ID so we can use it. So now uh, I'm going to run it again and we see that uh, we've got contract ID extracted. Perfect. And now I should be able to give and see the new chunk of blue text that confirms that it has been um, has been exercised. That choice of giving has been exercised and you can parse through this uh, second JSON output. And there you have it. We made a round trip to create a contract and then exercise on the choice to give the TV to Bob, all using the JSON API. So I hope that provided a great overview of the JSON API. Now you can truly BYOF, bring your own front end. We've got more content lined up. See you in the next episode. Bye. Bring front end you must with JSON API.